Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use SAR. This is video number five, and today we're talking about the LFO modulation. So let's load up a default patch as per usual. And the easiest way to demonstrate this at first is let's get a saw wave as, as a default patch gives us, and let's bring the cutoff down a little bit here and shave off some of that top end. Now let's go over to the LFO, and we have a few different knobs here. So we have speed, attack, release, and amplitude. So for the amplitude, let's turn this all the way up. And the default LFO is going to be a triangle as it looks down right here. So let's get the speed and let's change it a little bit to the, let's go all the way to the top. So basically that's a triangle wave that has the full amplitude, full speed, and it's moving this cutoff kind of back and forth really, really, really fast. And with the speed, we can slow it down. And then the attack is basically a fade into this LFO. So if we bring this up here, It takes a little bit for it to ramp up to get really going to its full uh, full value. And the release is the opposite, but we're going to need to have a little bit of release on the patch in the beginning just so we can see this. So if the, re if the release is all the way at the top, once I let go of the key, you can still hear that modulation, but if the release is pretty fast, it basically stops modulating the second I release the key. And again. So that's the difference. Attack is like the fade in to the full value and the release is basically the exact opposite. So let's load up a default patch once again. And let's look at this a little bit here. So for this next demonstration, we're going to go to the frequency or the master pitch you have a couple of different choices you have cutoff what we have is original we have sync we have phase frequency noise level and then pan so for this demonstration we're going to go to the master frequency and then let's hit a note here now we don't really notice anything because the amplitude is at the minimum value so zero percent if we bring this up here we can really see that triangle shape taking place if we went to a saw wave We can see that shape as well. Then if we go to a square wave, which is basically like an on off. And then the last one is a random. So let's go back to a triangle wave and let's look at this invert here. And all it's gonna do is just invert the polarity of the LFO. So to really see that, let's put a retrigger on. So every time it's going to start going upwards. And if we hit the invert, it's going to go downwards. So that's an easy way to see what this invert knob does here. And then retrig is the same thing as we talked about before up here. Every time you hit the note, this LFO is going to restart at its initial phase. So zero. If it's off, it's kind of just going to randomly pick. It's going to be free running LFO. So it's just always going to be cycling. And whenever you hit the note, wherever the cycle or the waveform is in the cycle, that's where it's going to start. So we hit it really fast. We can still see the, the, the sine wave or the triangle wave still going through here. We can still see the shape. It's still always going to be running. But every time we hit a note, it doesn't really matter unless we hit retrig. It's always going to start at the beginning. And then we can also go to sync. This is actually kind of cool here. So let's turn the sync on here. Can make some cool beats like that. Oh yeah. Sounds wonderful. So let's go back to a default patch for the last little thing here. So with this uh, tempo sync here, you might notice that this speed is basically in hertz, which a lot of LFOs are. But if you want something synced to your tempo, you hit the tempo sync, and now this switch changes to your host BPM. So you can really time things out accordingly. Let's go back to our frequency here. And let's turn this amplitude up. And all that will be in sync with your 
tempo. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.